Hi guys, I just want to give a big appreciative shout out to all the people that support the channel. Now I'm going to do this on every video today before the intro, okay, just a few seconds or so just to say a massive, massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel. Uh, the people who support through Patreon, the people who support through channel memberships, your support is massively important and it ensures that I can continue putting out videos on this channel. For the rest of you who are unable to support in that way, continue helping us out by commenting, getting involved in the conversation, sharing the videos and, and becoming part of the core community on the channel. Because without the community, this channel would literally be nothing. So I just want to give a massive, massive thank you and shout out to everybody who supports the channel in whichever way you do but specifically to these guys scrolling across the top here because your support really does ensure I can continue doing the work that I do for you guys. Thank you. Apparently it's now the police force's job to educate police constables on black history. I mean, I can see how that will make a difference to policing when they should be spending that time learning the law instead. Chief constables have promised a zero tolerance approach and mandatory training for all officers on racism. As I say, if you simply stick to treating everyone without fear or favor, treating everybody with respect, then the cost, time and manpower on this training can be put to better use. They also aim to boost black police recruitment and retention and improve support for black victims of crime. In other words, BAME officers will get away with much, much more and find it easier to climb the corporate ladder with white police superiors helping to remove any of the standards and barriers that all police should face and overcome before being afforded such positions. In the foreword of a new plan by the National Police Chiefs Council and the College of Policing, Chief Constables accepted change had been too slow and wrote, we accept that policing still contains racism, discrimination and bias. Wait, what? Didn't most of the forces deny racism just a few weeks back? Could they now be admitting it under political pressure? The plan says, We are ashamed of those truths. We apologise for them and we are determined to change them. We have much to do to secure the confidence of black people, including our own staff, and improve their experience of policing, and we will. Well, police will soon have a reparation fund, paying out their wages directly into a fund that goes to BLM in recompense for things their ancestors may or may not have done. What a joke. The plan is said to be in response to the anti-racism rallies across Britain after convicted felon George Floyd died in the USA. Sir Dave Thompson, West Midlands Chief Constable, has said, We absolutely accept that many people think we are institutionally racist. We know that through the engagement we've done, and that's the reality of where we are. What this plan is about is us saying, OK, our job through this action and through our work is to demonstrably show people we are not institutionally racist. The plan itself will be implemented across all forces later in 2022 after inviting comments from experts and the public. Experts, no doubt, like the same kind of people they get on GMB or the BBC. Chief Constables denied the plan was a woke exercise. How can it be woke to be more legitimate and more effective in how we stop and search people? Asked Tyrone Joyce, a temporary deputy chief constable and the UK's highest ranking black officer. And how can it be woke if all of that results in people feeling safer? I'll tell you why Tyrone. Because apart from you being specifically asked what you think about the idea of being woke and you yourself of BAME heritage, shows the tactics used by asking people who are bound to agree. I mean, I wonder if people 
watching this and hearing that comment from you are so keen to listen to you after knowing that in 2018 you yourself were accused of branding colleagues as terrorists if they disobeyed your orders as Chief Superintendent of the National Police Air Service. In fact, a source from the National Police Air Service said at the time, he is obsessed with political correctness and minority issues and thought there was not enough diversity in the service. He openly referred to the staff as male, pale and stale. He has a very abrasive style and didn't take it well if officers or pilots disagree with him. His stock phrase was, I will manage terrorists out of my organisation. Given that most of the staff in the National Police Air Service have been involved in counter-terrorism operations, some found that comment unpleasant. He is not a pilot and has no experience flying helicopters, so there were quite a few problems. So I suppose giving you that position when you had no experience with helicopters or piloting wasn't a woke idea either. In fact, at the time, more than 20 complaints were made against Joyce for bullying and a further 12 complaints made of overbearing conduct, although, surprise, I'm having difficulty finding the outcome of the investigation into him. It seems the Superintendents Association, who were backing him at the time, weren't able to scrub all the information from the internet. So, a racist top cop giving his opinion on this new plan really doesn't fill me with much confidence. As I said earlier, the police should not be given training on racism or black history. They should be given training on the law, human rights, constitution maybe. They should be taught how to treat everybody with respect, taught how to chase a suspect instead of tasering them or running them down in their car. They should be taught how to de-escalate situations, not how to get on one knee without scuffing their fucking trousers. The plan is said to be being given to Barrister and Bimbola Johnson. Surprise, surprise. Who will be scrutinising the plan with a panel? Johnson said the job of chief constables is always difficult. Dealing with aspects like racism is always very emotionally charged. People will have a negative reaction to the word, sometimes more to the word than racism itself. So there are aspects that will need to be navigated by them. They need to work closely with police and crime commissioners and members of the community and anti-racism groups. It will be a challenge and they will need to bring people along with them on the journey. Well, Ambimbola, I think it's important to note that yourself, 34-year-old barrister Ambimbola Johnson, has bragged of her hatred for the Tories and who has previously discussed crime being reclassified until you no longer need to fund a police force. In other words, part of the BLM mob who want to have police defunded. In fact, in a Twitter conversation on June the 29th, 2020, she said... The movement, BLM, is meant to make us think harder about how we could run a safe and fair society without the need for a police force. In another tweet in response to a now deleted post, she wrote, Yes, the ultimate aim is to create a societal system that no longer needs the police, or at least doesn't need police forces in the sizes we have now. And this is who has been appointed to see if the police are racist. One of her colleagues on the panel has also been involved in promoting protests against the police, in particular police impunity, which, to be fair, I don't disagree with. But this is someone who is clearly not impartial and, again, someone who has their own political views and agenda, who has been drafted in to investigate the police over racism. In my eyes, this is basically like getting the police to investigate themselves. This is not an exercise of independent examination of the police. This is someone who is biased and who clearly has an agenda of their own which will inevitably produce a report that will be in her favour. I don't agree with much the police do, but in order for any kind of investigation to occur, it must be impartial in the truest sense and not put together of woke, politically aligned individuals whose very past shows them to be against the police. 
Andy George, president of the National Black Police Association, said he hoped a return to neighbourhood policing would be part of the plan so that white officers could get to know communities with which they would otherwise have no regular contact. He said the plan must be more than a document which ticks boxes. We want and we demand real lasting change. Now, that I can pretty much get behind, but please, for fuck's sake, leave the colour references out. Getting back to neighbourhood policing would benefit everyone, all of society. You, me, black, white, everyone. And maybe we'll see the return of a beat bobby popping in for a couple with the neighbourhood watch, nipping round to little Timmy's to check he's still keeping himself out of trouble, pounding the pavement in high crime areas, showing a visible presence and keeping an eye out for those faces he knows that may be up to no good, while popping into the business owners and seeing if there was any problems that they want to report. This whole racism and colour narrative has to stop before it's pushed so far the divide is too wide to bridge. Thank you to channel supporters, especially these guys. Your support is truly appreciated. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts as I know many of you will. And until next time, stay safe, look after each other, film the police and other officials.